Hi, Apartment Therapy. Welcome to my 900 square foot loft apartment here in Brooklyn. It's a two bed, one bath. Yeah, two bed, one bath. How would you consider with this one and a half? Yeah, I was about to say, maybe not necessary then. Living in a loft here in Brooklyn is really interesting. Lofts are converted spaces, so previously this was like a warehouse, industrial machinery holding place. In my ceiling right here, you can see these T anchors that I think were used to hold up machinery. Quite frankly, loft life isn't for everyone. A lot of people, I think, when they think of living and moving to New York, they think of living like a beautiful loft with big windows, but let me tell you, it's poorly insulated, so it gets really cold during the winter, really hot during the summers. Pro, you do get a lot of sunlight, and it is, <laughs> it is so lovely to have so much sunlight and again the creativity that you're allowed to have in like a lofted space because it's not regulated the same way most buildings are but in a space that's converted like this one that potentially may not be super legal you have a lot of like space for creativity and the lawyer introduced me to this concept of loft law which is a set of protections meant for people specifically in converted spaces i specifically wanted to live in a loft for those reasons when I first moved in, and this was a three bedroom, I had just graduated from college and I couldn't really afford living with just one roommate and splitting the rent that way. And so it took two and a half years until I felt comfortable financially to kind of grow into a space and you know pay more for rent. And yeah, I was able to knock down the wall. Again, very lucky I live in a loft because the landlords at the time didn't care. Welcome to my dining room. This is my dining table. Also from Facebook Market, hefty price of $70. It's a nice oval shape. It's pretty petite and it, I think, very nicely holds and seats about five people. And right behind it is a kind of like a storage platform that me and my handyman Rory built. It previously was just, you know, bare floor. My armchair and kind of the things behind this dining room table kind of got lost and made it feel very cluttered when it was all on the same level. So I thought, hey, why don't we build a platform that can serve multi functions, like hold all my ACs when they're not in season, as well as another dining room table. And yeah, bring everything up so that you can have like a multi-level space to look at. With the tall ceilings in here, I have a lot of space to play with, especially when it comes to bringing things up vertically. Cool fact about this, I guess this dining room, this space, is this beautiful mid-century teak shelving unit that I have. I use this as a console to hold my cleaning supplies, random junk, my paper plates and stuff for hosting dinner parties. Um, obviously here in this glass display, I have my fancy, fun collectible glasses. So this is one of my favorite pieces in my apartment. I was thinking about getting a piece, like a nice long console piece to separate the living room from the dining room for a long time. And at the same time, I also wanted like a space that could act as a desk and storage. And I thought, might as well go for a USM hauler. This is one of my favorite lamps. It is a, a pretty recent like Ikea piece that now is highly sought after. It's from the Stockholm edition. And they have a standing lamp that looks exactly like this too, and you can find them on Facebook Market if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Again, I love chrome. I don't really like gold details in my apartment. This is another really cool piece that I got when I was in Mexico City. An early product designer. It's signed, which I think is really cool, but it's uneven. So I think it was like an early prototype of a lamp that someone was working on. But isn't it beautiful? I love like tinted lucite, especially in like lamp form. Here's my kitchen. We actually recently were forced to kind of renovate it. They moved my washer dryer from my bathroom into my kitchen and displaced a bunch of storage. So this is a very new addition. The stainless steel counter is uh, from a kitchen supply store. I really love the look of stainless steel and the way that it reflects light and is also really durable and easy to clean. Let's see, again, I love stainless steel as you can see by my two massive drying racks over here. We have one that holds more or less display items and uh, easy to access cooking gear versus this one, which is actually used to dry dishes. I love doing dinner parties here. It's fun to have everyone sit in like the living space behind you and just kind of in our conversation pit, 
eat and connect with people. If you actually look past this column, you can see that the whole back side of this is still white. Uh, same with on the side of the fridge, it's still white. But yeah, I painted it red. I think it's like a nice pop of color. It makes it look a lot fresher and more intentional. I don't know, it costs like $3 to do. Paint your fridge if uh, your landlord won't get mad at you. Then there's this like awkward space that kind of goes behind my refrigerator and it was just like so ugly and not functional. So I put like the microwave back here because I also don't really use the microwave all that often. And one thing that you can do if you do have like an awkward space like this, like what I got here and you want to hide it, you can get a tension, like a mini tension curtain rod and some like half window curtains and kind of just hide it which is what I did here. And I think it looks pretty cute. All right, so I have a crippling chair addiction. And if you couldn't already tell, I, I have a lot of designer chairs in here. And a lot of them are just ones that I think are really beautiful and interesting and I found on Facebook for stupid cheap. This is a beautiful cantilever chair. I forget the name of it, but I know that it's by the designer Mies van der Rohe. And then I have like the classic tulip chair, which is like an iconic design from like Italian futurism. I actually illegally installed my washer and dryer in my bathroom when I first moved in. And when I say illegally, I mean, I had the permission and the supervision. Matter of fact, my super was the one who installed the washer and dryer. Now that they're renovating and trying to legalize the entire building, they moved my washer dryer into the kitchen. And they displaced a lot of my storage, which really sucks. And with that being said, when they put the washer and dryer here, they had it, the whole side of it exposed to the living room. So you could see all the plumbing and the venting and all the plugs and stuff. And um, it just looked really ugly. So I put up some wood that I found in the basement of my building. Again, this is a loft. A lot of people like to do fun stuff in their lofts and then they leave all the extra materials in the basement. So I got really lucky. And I added this shelf that I already had, added some bar stools that I also already had from my chair collection and just styled it. So now it not only covers up the side of the washing machine, but it adds a lot more depth to the walkway when you first enter the apartment. I don't know, the cherry on top of my apartment is my lovely Camelionda sofa by Mario Bellini. This I'm pretty certain is a licensed reproduction of the Mario Bellini sofa. I got it from Facebook Market. It was a pretty penny, but it was significantly, I think, no, I know that it was over half off, like a retail price for the sofa. I learned about it in my design history class and I just kind of fell in love with the shape and the dynamic aspect of it. So right now I have it in what I, can, what I consider uh, my social setting where it's open to the rest of the living room. When you first walk into the apartment, you can come in and sit around this coffee table and you're facing away from the TV. Similarly, I have this coffee table right over here. It's a uh, Amilo Bauman and it's also kind of modular in the sense that it can be smaller and then bigger according to your needs. And it's absolutely beautiful and it has layers to it, which makes it so fun. So I'm a painter, or I can paint. That's normally what I say now, because I don't really paint much anymore. But I love painting portraits of people, and I found all the kind of fast consumerism of fashion to be really interesting, because we see all these beautiful campaigns in photography, but then, you know, after the season is over, you know, that's being generous, after a week, it kind of disappears into the void that is the internet. To kind of immortalize that, I started painting the really beautiful photography that I saw in fashion campaigns and kind of adding my own twist to it. I love food, not only because it's delicious and really colorful and has beautiful textures, but it also is such a staple to life. And I think the juxtaposition of placing food on top of a lot of my paintings makes it feel more humble. Welcome to my painting loft. I really do love how my bed is under my loft. I think it adds like a kind of like cave type feeling. It makes me feel safe because the ceilings are so low. When you're in such a, a tall space, it can kind of make the rest of the square footage feel a little bit smaller. And so having this loft here adds dimension. 
This is my really cool loft ladder. I had it commissioned by a scaffolding warehouse that's down the street from where I live, and they did it for me for a really great price. They actually only charged me $150. So uh, this is a really beautiful tapestry. It's a Moroccan tapestry. I bought it from Facebook Market from someone who actually lives up the street from me. It's a runner, like it's a rug runner. It's not really supposed to be a tapestry and you can tell by how thick it is. Obviously you can use it in whatever way, shape or form you want to, but I love the design so much that I wouldn't want to put it on the floor. Like I don't want people to step on it. And so I cleaned it and I thought, why not hang it over my bed? Cause it's, I don't know, again, so beautiful. And I love all the colors. Again, colors, I'm addicted. Uh, welcome to the master bedroom, which is my roommate's room. It is 10 by 13. It's a pretty, pretty massive room. And I actually, I just installed these beautiful white shelving. And yeah, it can just hold all of your junk. Should I close it? We changed the door from a solid wood door to a glass door so that we could get some of the light from her bedroom into the kitchen. As someone who really likes to work with their hands, but doesn't too often, like I work in tech and so I do a lot of computer stuff. It's nice to see things that you tangibly made and be able to constantly be working on things that you can see and that really contribute to making the space feel more like yourself and like an extension of yourself. For instance, like the glass brick blocks, the way that the light hits them during the day, how that refracts across the room, it just brings me joy and it's so lovely to see and experience. And I'm really grateful that I actually have the opportunity to do things like that in my apartment. There's nothing, there's no rules stopping you, but I want people to stop kind of contributing to this idea of like a trendy space. Do something that is true to yourself and that will last you essentially a lifetime.